Good afternoon and welcome to this afternoon's Artig webinar, uh, introducing you to the new DFT tool um, as part of the uh, Bus Open Data Service Suite called Analyze. Um, most of you should be uh, hopefully by now aware of the other Bus Open Data Services for timetabling and location and fare data. This new uh, analyze service is the is the next one to be released and, and uses the data that's already being provided. Um, and we'll find out more about what it can do in a moment or two. Um, this uh, webinar is being done uh, in conjunction with the Department of Transport and ETO World. Um, we are recording this uh, and the recording will be made available on YouTube uh, in the coming days. Um, you will get a link to it um, so you can either uh, review what was said yourselves or share it with colleagues that haven't been able to come. Um, we are very interested in your questions about the service. Um, please do feel free to use the chat as we're um, going through the presentations and uh, we'll uh, do our best to respond uh, during the, the session because there's a number of uh, ETO people on the call that are going to uh, help with that um, and um, we'll have a Q&A session uh, afterwards for uh, things that uh, we haven't been able to deal with uh, during the session. Um, so for those of you that haven't come across uh, Artig before, we're a membership body for people involved in public transport technology um, and our membership uh, encompasses the whole um, uh, sector from local authorities and bus operators like yourselves uh, to suppliers and consultants and, uh, and we run events like this, uh, develop technical standards and, and guidance on how to use uh, public transport technology um, and how to uh, present that information to uh, your customers. Um, and we work uh, quite extensively with the DFT, um, doing things like this webinar for them, um, as well as on policy and, and implementation matters. And we represent the UK uh, in European Standards Forums as well. So that's uh, a quick intro to Artig. Um, you've all come to hear about the Analyze service um, and so um, I'm going to jump now to Dan Jones from ETO um, who's going to uh, talk to you about the Analyze service and what it can do. Welcome Dan. Thanks Tim um, for the introduction. I'll just share my screen. So welcome everyone to this introduction to analyze uh, bus open data. Um, before we jump into talking about the service, I just want to do some introductions. So as, as Tim's mentioned, ETA World um, is the DFT's technical partner for the bus open data service and also this new analyzed bus open data service as well. Um, I'm Dan Jones, I'm a product manager at ETA World. So um, I, I go out and speak to people like you and make sure that your kind of needs and wants are communicated back to the, to the team back at ETA who builds the service. Um, I'm joined today by two of my colleagues. One of them is Patrick, if you want to introduce yourself. Thanks, Dan. Uh, yeah, hi, everyone. I'm Patrick. I've been at ETO for about a year and a half now, but very recently joined Dan, Amy, and the BODS and ABOD team uh, recently. So I've uh, mainly been helping with the onboarding process for uh, people and operators such as yourselves, and uh, also helping with uh, some more technical queries as well. Uh, so uh, I'll also be kind of helping out in the chat to answer any questions. I'll pass it on to Amy. Yeah, morning everybody. I'm Amy Bridge. I'm a project manager at ETO World and I work across the bus open data program. So on both BODS and Analyze Bus Open Data at ETO World. Um, and I'll also be um, 
helping today um, with managing any questions that you guys have got. So as Dan progresses through the presentation today, if you guys think of questions as you go, um, as Tim mentioned earlier on, please feel free to post them in the chat um, and we'll keep an eye on those as we progress. And then we'll have some time um, later in the presentation to, to answer anything that's cropped up in the chat um, through, through the session. Thanks, Dan. Perfect, thanks both. Um, so I'll just progress on. So just to talk today about um, what we're going to cover, we want to cover a background to the BAS Open Data Service itself and how this fits in with analysed BAS Open Data. Um, we want to then give an introduction to the to the service and a quick overview demo of the functionality that we've made available so far and briefly talk about what we're going to make available um, in the near future. Um, as Amy said, as we go along, if you have any questions, post them in the chat and we'll um, talk about them at the end. Um, we've had a few questions already um, given to us that we've included to kind of kick things off. So we'll cover some of those questions that you've asked before the webinar at that point. Um, and, and just to note, this, there are later webinars which we'll um, highlight at the end. Um, and they're designed to talk uh, more in depth about uh, the on-time performance module and future releases. Um, and, and this webinar is designed as an, an introduction to the service. Um, so quickly to talk about the BAS Open Data Service, which we call BONTS. Um, this is a commitment to open up BAS data from 2020, including all the local BAS services across England. Um, as, as you hopefully know, BAS operators can link or upload the data via the published service. And then the find data service allows data consumers and app developers and so on to, to find this download it um, via an API or in the browser. Um, we've kind of been progressing along since since 2018, starting with a kind of alpha of the timetables prototype. Um, and then we moved on to what we call the beta phase one. And that's where we allowed uh, all of you guys to publish your timetables. Um, and also receive back data quality reports that help you on particular measures of, of data quality that we think should be improved. Um, and the trans exchange tool as well for, for operators who didn't have um, software to create timetables to, to be able to do that. Um, when we moved on very recently to the current phase um, where we enable you to publish your fares and ticketing information um, and also your uh, AVL um, vehicle location information as well. Um, and the kind of relevant part for today's presentation is punctuality data as well. We want, we want to make that available to, to everyone um, where we can. Um, so if we just quickly look at the BODS functionality, uh, as we've kind of spoken through there, we have the operators um, publishing the schedule data in trans exchange format. Um, the ABL um, vehicle location data in the VM format, and then the fares and NetEx. And that goes on to the published service. Um, likewise, we have the consume service for data consumers. Originally, they could uh, receive all of that data that you uploaded in its raw format. Um, and more recently, we've added um, GTFS and GTFS RT feeds um, for the data that you've provided. Um, and it can also be accessed via an API or can be downloaded in bulk altogether um, for those making larger um, app applications. Um, more recently, we've added on what we call the integrated transit model. And essentially what, what we're doing there is ingesting all of the timetable information you've given us and all of the real time information, um, matching that real time information to the timetables where we can. Um, and then archiving that down continuously over time. So um, sort of every minute of the day, we're archiving this information. Um, and that enables us to build um, the analyzed bus open data service on top of that archive of information. Um, and that includes um, several different areas, which we'll show you later, and feed monitoring um, to look at the real-time feeds that, that you're providing by operator. Um, Alert. So if you have any issues with your data feeds and later on with your on-time performance, then you can get alerts for these um, and schedule adherence and reporting analytics to see um, how closely your uh, services are adhering to their schedules. 
Um, analyze bus open data itself. So if we just talk quickly about the aims of, of the service, so it's, it's part of DFT's ongoing investment in bus services and, and hopefully over time it will support the recently announced national bus strategy and, and also including um, enhanced partnerships and, and the bus service improvement plans as well. Um, it's, it's going to help local uh, authorities, bus operators, and, and the central government themselves to perform um, data analysis in hopefully faster and easier ways, um, produce more accurate and detailed performance reports, um, improve collaboration between different organizations. So importantly, um, this tool gives the same view of the data um, to, to everyone who's looking at it. So um, you can use this to kind of collaborate and see the same same data as, as other organizations that are looking at it. Um, and hopefully over time, as we introduce some more kind of geography based features on a map, we can help um, identify potential network improvement opportunities um, and feed this all back into transport policy and compliance monitoring across the industry. Um, to talk a bit more about the use of analyze bus open data, the service is available to four main user groups. Um, so one of those is operators, which which yourselves, um, the others are local authorities, and then uh, we have the central DFT team. So that's sort of made up by policy and, and stats people. Um, and then we have the regulators. So DVSA um, will be the kind of main users um, on that front. All users have access only to the national operator codes that are relevant to them. Um, so although you all have access to uh, the service, you all see slightly different views depending on um, the operators that, that you're responsible for. So as an example, the local authorities in your area will be able to see um, your operator alongside other operators that, that operate, operate in their area. Um, it's based only on uh, open data that's provided to the bus open data service um, and it provides relevant free and consistent analysis to all user groups. Um, so there are some organisations that may not have had such tools historically and this is sort of designed to level the playing field a bit and, and give people access to, to some of these tools that can help um, improve their bus services over time. So if I just talk quickly about the requirements that, that we need to, to give you this analysis within the tool, um, the kind of core foundation element is the network topology. So we're talking here about the relationships between stations and stops and, and the service itself handles this. So, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, we need the scheduled data. So we need operators to publish their data on bonds. And that tells the system what, what is supposed to happen. Um, and then we also need real-time data, again, um, from the AVL feeds that you publish on BODS, and that tells us what is actually happening right now. Um, so from the operator's point of view, you need to help um, by providing those two elements, um, the real-time data and the scheduled data. And I'll just dive a little bit more into some detail about this. Um, so the real-time data itself, um, if you're providing this, it's great. Um, if, if we want kind of accurate and correct analysis, we, we need the data to include the correct national operator codes. Um, so if you don't know what this is, um, you can, can find this on the Travel Line website. Um, and that's, that helps us match to your timetables uh, as, as you publish them as well. Um, we need correct references to the timetable journey code. So uh, we need something in the Siri VM feed that tells us the vehicle journey code or uses the ticket machine extension, something to tell us which um, journey that vehicle is running. Um, and if we provided that, we can get a very good match to your timetables. Um, as you'd expect, we, we need really frequent updates. So at least every 30 seconds, we need a, a ping from, from your vehicles with the GPS position. Um, Obviously, the, the more frequent we're able to obtain these updates, the more accurate we can determine where, when a bus is departing at a stop. Um, and the other part of that is an accurate vehicle position. Obviously, the GPS coordinates we receive need to be accurate, um, and, and we can only sort of deal with, with what we're given on that front. Um, 
in general, the more information that you're able to provide and happy to provide, the better. So if you can provide things like the line name, uh, the origin information, the destination information, this all helps to um, make sure that we're matching the correct vehicle um, in the real-time data to the correct journey in the timetables. Um, just going a little bit deeper into the scheduled data. Um, so again, this needs to include national operator codes so we can tell which operator it belongs to. Um, and very broadly, the timetable information you're providing, it needs to be accurate. Um, it needs to be current. Um, so it needs to be correct as of the time you're providing it and it needs to be complete. Um, so obviously if we have expired inf timetable information or old timetable information on the service, the, the resulting analysis isn't going to be very accurate. Um, and again, where, where we kind of spoke about those real-time references, they need to match in the timetable information you're providing. Um, so we need some correct real-time references as well. Um, one thing to mention is, um, as we appreciate operators are still publishing their data at the moment, until the end of, of June this year, we're, we're using um, some TNDS scheduled data to supplement any data that's currently missing from BODS. So at the moment, if you haven't provided your timetable data from BODS, um, we'll find this in TNDS, um, but we intend to stop doing that at the end of June. So everyone is getting um, a kind of reliable view of what's being provided from within the bus open data service. Um, so if you haven't put your timetable data on BODS, um, any analysis you see here will, will kind of disappear at the end of June um, if you don't publish within BODS. Um, one important thing to notice about the service is it, it's, it's a series of phased launches. So over time, um, we, we kind of add additional functionality to the service and at the same time, listen to all of your feedback and, and try and improve the service as we go along. Um, so we started at the end of um, last year. Initially, we set up the kind of data warehouse um, to, to kind of store all of this data down in um, and began with the kind of schedule and real-time matching as well. And that's when we provided GTFS data on the pods. Um, the sort of next phase we went through was the feed monitoring uh, functionality within the system and, and the email alerting and so on. Um, and generally getting the service up and running and, and we launched that um, at the end of last year. And then um, a, a month or so ago, we launched the on-time performance features. Um, so this enables you to see when uh, services, uh, sorry, whether services are arriving on time early or late at stops. Um, and at the moment we're working, we're currently developing um, what we call the mapping and geography functionality, which I'll talk more about in a bit. Um, but it's important to know at all times we're taking on board your feedback and, and we do make releases more regular than this schedule where, where we can and where we feel it's appropriate. So um, over time, you'll see the service changing slightly, hopefully in, improving um, and taking on board some, some of your feedback that, that you're giving to us. Um, so please do, do let us know of, of anything you think of to help improve the service. I um, just want to talk a little bit about uh, the research that we did in order to build this service. So we conducted this in two phases, one of them during the summer of last year um, and one of them at the very beginning of this year. Um, again, we, we tried to get a, a broad range of opinions of, of the four key user groups, so local authorities, bus operators, regulators and, and DFT. Um, and this included 66 interviews and testing sessions. So not only were we going out and asking questions about um, your kind of analytics capabilities and so on, we were also showing you wireframes and designs and, and trying to get some feedback on that in, in a rapid way and, and change them to be, to be more appropriate and helpful to you. Um, so that was across the, the four user groups. We also did three PTE workshops um, four knowledge sharing sessions. So uh, we spoke to people like the Geospatial Committee, the DFT data science team, the DFT rail team, and, and really just uh, tried to find out across the industry how people were approaching this problem and also looking at some different industries and, and how they also approached uh, similar um, ideas and took some of that on board as we built the service. Um, we also did some workshops. So 
um, some process mapping workshops with local authorities and DFT, um, and then some strategy and policy workshops as well to support this. So I'm just going to talk very briefly before I do a demo about the um, functionality that's currently available within the service. So um, this kind of splits into two main areas. One of them is feed monitoring and the other one is on-time performance. Um, so feed monitoring, very broadly, it's, it's there to help you monitor which feeds BODS has access to in real time. Um, and, and that's kind of split down by national operator code. Um, it gives you ability to see a live view. So what are we currently seeing in that feed? And then also a feed history. So um, over the last 90 days, what has that feed looked like? Have we had any issues? Have we had any large absences of data and so on? So yeah, it gives an idea of the number of vehicles that we're expecting to see and, and the number that we're able to match and, and receive um, within that real time information. Um, if these numbers aren't matching, then the resulting on-time performance analysis will, will likely be incomplete. Um, and you're also able to set up alerts to receive emails for, for any errors that, that we kind of notice at the moment. These are broad errors, so things like the feed's not working or there's more than half of the expected data missing and so on. Um, and, and hopefully they'll get more granular over time. Um, the on-time performance uh, area of the service, so this lets you view aggregated operator performance um, against on-time early and late metrics. Um, it, it lets you drill down into the line level performance and then a bit further to see um, how the stops are performing along those lines. Um, when we talk about on-time early and late in the system, it's, it's as per the kind of um, OTC definitions that you're hopefully used to. So, on time we class as being um, one minute early up to six minutes late. Um, if we class it as late, that, that means the service departed more than six minutes late and early means it uh, departed more than one minute early. Um, it's really important to note there are more features to come. So as we released this fairly recently, we're, we're, we're getting loads of really good feedback from, from all of you um, and we're we're hoping to take that on board and, and to kind of iterate and, and improve the service so it is under active development um, and we will be making kind of small changes to this area as we go along so the geographical analysis that we intend to, uh, to provide is still undergoing user research and development um, the the kind of core of the functionality is, is based on a lot of research we did early on is that operators and local authorities would really like to explore this data geographically. So they'd like to essentially see this on a map. Um, so they'd like to see how their bus is performing um, on a map in different areas that they operate. Um, so another part of that is potentially allowing um, people to build up and monitor corridors that are relevant to them. Um, so you could sort of build up your own corridor within the service and, and then monitor that over time, um, how that's performing. Um, probably quite importantly, if you don't have access, how, how do you get access to the service? Um, so uh, as I mentioned before, um, if you want to see anything when you log in, the, the operator, so you guys must provide the timetable and AVL information to BOD. So that's the kind of um, core prerequisite um, before you join the service. Um, once you've done that, you can request an invitation to access um, if you email that, that email there. Um, after you've done that, um, we'll shortly then send an invite to you. Um, this will have a 72 hour expiry on there, so please accept it within three days. Um, if you don't, don't, it's not a big deal, just let us know and we'll send you another one. Um, once you've logged in, um, it's good to check, have a look around, as I'm sure you will, and see if, if you're seeing all the data you expect. Um, so if you think you have operators missing or you think anything is kind of strange or, or not quite right, um, please email and let us know. We're really interested to kind of help you out and, and sort that out as well. Um, if you have any kind of generic feedback or anything that doesn't kind of fall into the above things I talked about, um, we're sending a survey um, around after this webinar. Um, or just feel free to email me as well. Um, I'm always open to, to have a chat about things. Um, 
So I'll just switch now to my other screen and give you a quick demo of the service just to introduce those different areas of functionality. So one second. Cool. So when you log into the service, you'll you'll see um, the dashboard essentially, and that's going to give you a view, a, a kind of overview of the information that we have. Um, it's important to note if you have more than one kind of operating company or one more than one national operator code, we will kind of aggregate this all together on this dashboard. But if you want, um, you can kind of just click an individual operator and see the dashboard just for that one operator. If you have multiple. Um, so this, this dashboard is designed to give you a quick overview of your on-time performance. So for the time period that you've selected um, down here, um, the uh, on-time performance for that time period will, will show here. It will also show you the top three um, lines in your data and also the bottom three. Um, so if you look at the bottom three lines and, and you see anything that, that's kind of strange or not expected, you can start to drill down into that information um, and, and see if there's any improvements that can be made. Um, on the right of the dashboard, you see some um, more feed monitoring type metrics. So we're telling you how many vehicles we're currently seeing in, in all of your feeds. Um, and that, that essentially means the number of vehicles that we can match to the schedules that you've provided. Um, and then also we give you an expected number. So when we're looking at the schedules, um, how many vehicles do we expect to be seeing? Um, and hopefully these numbers are fairly close together. Um, we also then give a feed status. So if you have multiple feeds, you can see um, a few of them here. And, and if there are any with errors, these will kind of come up to the top. Um, so if you have a red cross next to the feed, that means it's not providing any data to us right now. If it's green tick, um, that's generally good. We're getting data from the feed. I'll just drill very quickly into the feed monitoring. Um, so if you click there, you can see all of the feeds that you're providing. Um, any inactive feeds or feeds that aren't currently working will come up to the top. Um, it'll tell you how long it's been unavailable um, to our service for. Um, and if you look at the active feeds below, um, you'll see some very quick metrics about them. So this is feed availability, um, tells us um, for the last 24 hours, what's the percentage of time that we were receiving data for when we expected to receive it? Um, we also give you the update frequency. So what's the average uh, gap between GPS pings? If it's below 30 seconds, as we mentioned earlier. And then if there are any outages, what, what was the last, when was the last outage? Um, and we sort of see a profile of this information over the last 24 hours. So these all look fairly normal. Um, if you click into the feed themselves, you can see a live view. So this tells you currently right now, how many vehicles do we see in the feed? How many do we expect? Um, and then we also show that information for the last 20 minutes. Um, we also show the information for the last 24 hours as well. Um, it's important to note that this is kind of aggregated up over all the vehicle journeys. So you can see there's uh, 35 expected vehicle journeys here, but we only tracked 30 of them. Um, and because it's kind of summing up over an hour, and that's why these numbers are slightly larger than the numbers on, on the last 20 minute graph. Um, if there are any alerts in the last 24 hours, they'll kind of show up at, at the bottom here. Um, and they, they'll be for things like the feed's broken or it's missing a lot of data. Um, and then you can also view a feed history. So um, this sort of tells you over the last um, 90 days, uh, what is the profile of the feed that we're receiving? Um, and if there are any alerts, they'll also show in the, in the event log below. Um, it's important to note um, in your account section, you also have notifications that you can set up. Um, so if you want to be notified about something like a feed failure event, um, you can come in here and say, if vehicle data has been missing from the service for more than 25 minutes, send a notification to someone in your organization and then you can create that notification. If that thing happens, if the event happens um, and your feed breaks, we'll, we'll send you an email and, and you can um, sort it out from there. Um, 
I'll quickly show you the on-time performance section as well. So when you come in here, um, again, you want to select the operator that you want to have a look at. Um, and once you've done that, you can view by default the last 28 days of on-time performance. Um, you can choose any time period you like. So if you use this kind of date picker, go as far back in history as you've provided data for. So even the years of time, you can come back and look at um, data from today if you want to. So pick any time range you want, and then you'll be able to see this on the graph below. Um, you can provide filters as well. So if you just wanted to see data um, during the week and only in the time period around rush hour, you can apply those filters to this data and see what your data would have looked like within those time periods. Um, so you can apply those filters and that will change the analysis that you see as well. Um, and probably one of the more important filters is at the top here, you can click to see uh, the information just for timing points only if you want to as well. Um, by default, it's showing you all of the stops. Um, we give you a few different graphs. So we give you an overview. So it's a sort of timeline um, over the days that are present of, of what the on-time performance has been. Um, we show you a distribution of, of how late the service has been. So you sort of want to see one peak around zero, um, but it kind of shows you if you've got any services that are very late or very early. Um, we also see the information aggregated to time of the day. Um, so this is sort of 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 7 a.m., all the way up to 8 p.m. And that kind of helps you understand for the time range that you selected, are there any particular hours of the day where you're not performing very well? Um, and the same for day of the week, are there any days of the week um, where the data is, where the on-time performance is not, not quite as good as it should be? So you can quickly um, spot any kind of systemic problems um, and try and sort those out. Um, we then give you an overview of um, the on-time performance, um, how how many, what the proportion of departures are late and early and so on. Um, and we also tell you how many departures we have no data for. Um, so this is essentially where we couldn't um, record a stop, um, sorry, record a bus departing. We're just telling you how many of those occurred in the time range that we provided. Um, and down below, you can see all of the lines that you have under this operator. Um, you can see the on-time performance on the right, um, early and late, the average delay. Um, and you can also see the number of scheduled departures we expected within that time period, um, and then the number of recorded departures. So we want this percentage to be as, as close to 100 as we can get, so we can get complete on-time performance information for it. Um, you can search for lines if you have lots of services. You can kind of search for the one that you want to find um, here, um, or you can just kind of paginate through the pages um, in the bottom right. Once you drill down a bit further, you can see um, essentially the same information, um, but for the line that you choose. Uh, so you can you can do all the same things in terms of filtering, looking at different time ranges, looking at the different graphs and seeing the overview metrics of, of the service, sorry, of the line that you've selected. Um, and then down below, you can see a list of stops along that service. Um, again, how um, on time um, the, the buses departed those stops at. Um, and, and again, similar information, but um, one level deeper. So you can start to see if there are any stops along this line that um, sort of need improvements and, and so on. Um, so that's what's available at the moment. Um, we're currently making some more adjustments to this that will be released um, in the near future. One of those is to add, add a map to this page so you can see um, how these stops look on a map, essentially. So you can see the service on the map. You can see very quickly um, which areas are kind of um, on time or late and so on. Um, and then we also want to build up this section here, which is coming soon. Um, but essentially provide a map where you can see all of your data at once um, and do things like build up corridors and monitor these um, over time. So that was a quick introduction. As I said, in later webinars, we'll kind of go into some more detail about some of these things. Um, but for now, I'll just jump back to the presentation.
Um, so we have some questions that we received in advance. Um, so I'll just go through these and, and give some of those answers and then we'll see if we have any questions from the chat. Um, so to do please add any questions in whilst, whilst I go through here and we can answer them. Um, so one question we said is how should consultants and agents working on behalf of local authorities and operators um, use ABOD? Um, the question is at the moment there isn't any specific functionality for agents. Um, we have had a quite a few chats where we, we see this as a potential emerging opportunity that we could look at. So um, although we don't support this right now, over time um, we could we could look to support it. Um, so, so definitely feedback on that if you think it will be useful. Um, next question we had was, do we foresee the use of ABOD to help with uh, enhanced partnerships and bus service improvement plans? The answer to that is yes, we, we want this to be helpful um, with, with those things. Um, obviously right now, as we build up the functionality, perhaps not all of the elements are there that, that could support this, but um, with the next few releases, we have we have in mind these these sort of enhanced partnerships and bus service improvement plans and, and building in features that can help support those where possible. Um, obviously, we had lots of questions about how accurate the functionality figures are. Um, so essentially, it goes back to that slide I showed you earlier. We need um, accurate and complete uh, timetable information and accurate and complete real time information. Um, once we have that, um, the information should be, should be accurate. Um, if you feel like it's not, or if you have any sort of questions about it, please feel free to get in touch with us and, and we can have a deeper look. Um, how can disruptions be accounted for? Someone asked this. Um, at the moment, um, as I mentioned, we're only drawing information from, from the bus open data service. Um, this doesn't have any disruptions information at the moment. Um, if it did become available, then, then at that point we could could look to consider that in a later later release, perhaps providing some context for how disruptions might have affected the on time performance for everyone to see. Um, someone else is the performance based on arrivals or departures. It, it's based on departures. Um, so um, when we're saying uh, something is late, we're saying it departed the stop late. Um, and someone else, can you see or filter data by uh, selected? Timing points. So, if you remember when I showed you the demo in the top right, there was a filter toggle to select to view data just for timing points. So, that's the functionality we have at the moment. Um, if you have any feedback on that, feel free to, to let us know and we can see if we can improve that over time. Um, so, I'll now open questions to the floor and Amy, please let me know if we've, we've received any and I can do my best to answer them. Yeah, thank you, Dan. Um, so there have been a few questions in the chat. Um, I think I've just managed to get through all of them. Um, and so um, I don't think that there's anything for us to necessarily go through in terms of what's come through on the chat. But if anybody has got any other questions or, or any extra clarifications that they'd like us to discuss just now, if you could post another message in the chat, that would be great. And I can see, Graham, that you've just sent another message. If you want to drop an email through to Patrick's email address, which I just posted, um, then, then we can look into any um, specific um, things with your data um, that aren't as expected for you. Um, there is a question, Dan, that's just come through from Simon. Um, is early late running in the dashboard based on all timing points or all bus stops? Do you want uh, to... Yeah, currently it's based on all of the stops. Um, but if you have feedback on that, then let us know. It doesn't necessarily always need to be the case, or we could add an option in to, to um, filter that for timing points. But just, just to be clear at the moment, it's for all of the stops. Hopefully that helps, Simon. Um, and if anybody else has got any questions, please feel free to to put them in the in the chat box. We'll just give it another moment or two to give everyone a chance if you do have any questions. Sure, and yeah, just to kind of pick up on what Amy said, if, if you have any questions you want to um, email us afterwards, then feel free to do so. Um, obviously the service is new, we want to make sure it's kind of relevant and accurate and so on, so we want to hear, hear any of your feedback. Um, so yeah, encourage you to do so. 
Thanks, Simon. That's useful to know that you're interested in the dashboard, essentially reflecting timing point level as well as all stops. Um, and then we've just had a question from John to ask, how is progress with frequent services and excess waiting time measure of punctuality? Um, regarding the previous question, punctuality, uh, punctuality must be measurable at registered timing points only, um, as that's a measure um, DBSA and OTC use. Dan, okay. do you want to talk about uh, frequent services? Yeah, sure. Thanks, John, for reminding me. I, I should have put that in the presentation. Um, when we, we have been thinking about it and, and um, talking to people about this, and um, yeah, we do in, still intend to cover this. Um, it will probably be um, in that release towards the autumn time. And it's likely if we, um, at the moment, if we give people the ability to build up corridors, perhaps we can use that part of the service to also indicate uh, things like frequency along those corridors um, for the services that you selected. Um, so, so yeah, it's still, on, uh, it's still in progress. It's not necessarily something that's very simple. So uh, we're, we're trying to make sure we, we get it right. So hopefully later in the year, you'll see some of that come through. Thank you, Dan. Um, there's been a question from Richard that has come through to ask, will any of the BOD's information be made available publicly? Um, there's probably a clarification question from me back to you, Richard, which is just to check. Um, do you mean um, BOD's information? If so, BOD's is a completely open service, which is available now. Um, and so from the point of view of BOD's information, all of that is publicly available. If your question was to do with Analyze Thus Open Data, at the moment, Analyze Thus Open Data is um, a service that's available uh, only to operators, authorities, DFT, um, and the regulators. And so from the point of view of the Analyze Thus Open Data data, that is um, at the moment um, for use um, just by those groups. Although, um, as Dan mentioned earlier, um, things like punctuality, um, is is something that operators report back to DBSA um, and DFT, and so um, the there are considerations taking place at the moment about whether there should be a link between analysed bus open data statistics and and bots. So that's been looked into. Um, okay, you've just clarified, Richard, that you did mean the analysis. So yeah, at the moment, it's it's just for those user groups as things stand. Um, and then there's been a question from Neil to say, what are the plans for geography and policy planning aspects of the analysis? How can we get involved? Dan, do you want to talk about that? Um, I guess the, the plans are that, so we did some research that involved um, probably some of, some of you and some authorities and, and DFT at the start of the year. Um, as we begin to kind of implement some of these features from the technical side, um, for sure, it, it, we, we want to reach out to, to everyone again and speak to people and make sure that this is um, this is helpful um, for for kind of policy planning those those new new sections of the service. So um, I'll put my email on the next slide. Just just drop me an email and, and then we can chat as well. Thanks, Dan. Um, and Stephen Salmon has asked, is the archived location data part of the open set? Dan, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that that isn't the case on bus open data. So bus open data, you can get the live vehicle updates, but in terms of archived location data, that's not available on BODS right now. Yeah, that, that's correct. That, that doesn't mean that it, you could um, build an archive yourself by just kind of hitting the bulk download um, over time, but it's not, the archive isn't made available at the moment in, on the bus open data service. Thanks, Dan. Um, and Josh has asked, um, the launch of ABOD um, seems a little under the radar um, as he first became aware of it via a tweet um, and he's not sure where we currently stand um, as to what uh, the operator should or shouldn't be doing to use analyze bus open data, add to it, interrogate the data, etc. Or if this is purely a test phase, um, as an operator, what should I be doing with this data currently? Um, I, I guess that the answer to that is that this isn't a test phase um, right, right now. Um, 
it's a relatively newly launched service. And so as Dan has said, um, we are making improvements and there'll be additional features that come into the service later on in the year, which we hope will make it um, all the more useful um, to you guys. Um, but it, it's a kind of live service right now. In terms of what you should do with it, um, it's kind of entirely up to you. We, we hope that this is something that is useful to operators and to authorities to um, monitor bus service um, punctuality and um, especially when the geography based features come in later on in the year to be able to look at network performance. Um, you don't have to use the service, it's something that DFT are, are investing in on behalf of operators and authorities nationally but you don't have to use it. Um, if, if you've got any kind of other questions or kind of comments on how useful it is to you or suggestions for how we could make it more useful then please let us know we'll also be sending out a survey after today's session and so you can either send us an email directly or or if you put some comments into that um survey that comes out then then please let us know um if there's things that we could do to make it um more useful for you i hope that that helps josh let me know if you've got any follow-up questions in the chat and there's also a question, Dan, that's come from Graham to ask, how is ABOD handling GPS drift? Um, and also how many points on a trip does ABOD need to see before it is considered um, as a trip that is tracked? Um, so the first one, GPS drift, I'll, Graham, if you could um, email me that question and I'll talk to the technical team and I don't want to give the wrong answer to that. And I'm sure they'll be able to provide a better answer than me. Um, on how many points on a trip does uh, thanks, Ray. Um, on how many points on a trip does it need before it's tracked? So the analysis is built up, um, aggregated on on stop uh, departures. So um, we're not giving any kind of trip level statistics at the moment. So that's not necessarily a concern for us right now. Um, but if I've kind of misunderstood, then then let me know. And there's a question that's just come in from Graham Smith to ask when punctuality is calculated, taking into consideration the last, sorry, when punctuality is calculated, taking into consideration the last stop on the route, um, we and others allow some recovery time between the last stop and the stop prior, which can mean we arrive at the destination more than at one minute early. Is that problematic? Um, no, we because we are using departures, we, we essentially don't count the last stop. Um, so because that's just an arrival at that point. So yeah, that, that wouldn't matter. I hope that helps Graham Smith. Thanks, Graham. And Neil has just written, I reckon the policy planning side will have to use an archive set to capture change. The question is how to decide when a baseline should be. Um, yeah, I, I think that that's a really good point. I don't know, Dan, if you want to add any thoughts about that. Um, probably not. I think that's an open discussion. Um, <laughs> a good question, as Neil said. We'll just pause for another moment or two in case there's any other final questions. And if not, there's just one or two other slides that Dan has to finish up the presentation. Yeah, I think you can carry on, Dan. Um, so yeah, what's next? Request an invitation, ask where the questions, email, um, that email at the top. If you want to talk to me, then there's my email. Um, feel free to, to email me and, and I'll help out as well. Um, we'll also send a questionnaire around. So if you want to ask any questions, on there you can do so as well or just give feedback um, and we, we want to make sure we, we address and, and speak to you about all your feedback. Um, come to webinars in June July so we'll have a couple more webinars um, based on the feedback you give us about this webinar and also just wanting to go into some more detail about things we'll um, create uh, those webinars for you later um, next month. Um, Keep an eye out for any any new features that are going to be added this autumn, and and do engage with us on Twitter or LinkedIn. Uh, some information for that there, 
And finally, if you go onto the EWL website, we're we're starting to look at some of this data as well and do some some visualizations. Uh, some of you might have seen seen them on LinkedIn, so please do engage with with those uh, posts on LinkedIn if you can, and, and feel free to give our website a visit to look at some more of that. Um, so I think that's everything from us. Um, I just want to thank everyone for attending, um, and thanks Tim and, and Arctic for hosting this. Um, have a good afternoon. Thank you, Dan, Amy, and Patrick for that. Um, do encourage you to, uh, to to sign up for the June and July ones, um, and uh, yeah, follow uh, those and, uh, and ask questions. Um, so uh, thank you all for your time today. Hope you found it useful, um, and uh, hopefully see you again um, on a call uh, soon. Thank you all. Thank you for watching this Artig webinar. To find out more about Artig and our work, then please visit our website at rtig.org.uk. Thank you.